I was so excited to start my 200 hour yoga training and learn all the new postures and movements. So it was kind of surprising to graduate having only learned one. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the seven main topics that are covered in a 200 hour yoga teacher training so that you know what to expect if you're thinking of doing one. But more importantly, the bits that are not covered so that you feel fully informed if it's a process that you're thinking of going ahead and doing. So let's get to it with number one, 200 hours. First, let me quickly cover some basic terminology to make sure they're all on the same page. YTT stands for yoga teacher training. And you're not alone if this is the first time you've learned that because it took me ages to figure out. So so a 200 hour YTT is a basic training level, meaning it's the entry level qualification to become a teacher. You can't do any more, you can't do any less. If you want to become a yoga teacher from scratch, you do a 200 hour training. But don't confuse the word basic for simple. As the name suggests, it's meant to involve 200 hours of study, which for most people's brains is far too arbitrary to actually figure out any meaning behind. So for context, 200 hours is the same as working nine to five with no lunch break, five days a week for five weeks straight. That makes it seem like a lot more work. And this can sound really daunting, but something that they don't tell you before you start is that some of those 200 hours can be taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt. All teacher trainings are obviously different and I've not taken every single one in the whole wide world, so I can't speak for them all, but some of these hours are dedicated to self-practice or self-study. And that is an excellent opportunity to develop your own practice if you have the time for that. But if you're also trying to hold down a job, if you're trying to care for family, keep up with other responsibilities, it gives you a little bit of leeway to continue life and survive. So number two, not all 200 hour trainings are created equal in both the content that they cover nor the quality of that content. Because there's no rule book which dictates what a 200 hour training must include. And there's no test that somebody must pass to deem them qualified to train people to be teachers. The school or the lead teacher, whoever's running the training, they decide on the curriculum. So depending on their style, their preferences, you may find 10 of those 200 hours are dedicated to let's say philosophy, or you may find that 50 of those hours are. And depending on your preferences, one of those may sound more appealing to you than the other. In the same way that there may be modules on social media, but there may not. Which is why I totally get it, choosing a yoga teacher training can feel really difficult, but my two cents of advice would be to take a training from a teacher that you know and a teacher that you like and trust. Take their workshops, get a feel for how they teach, do you resonate with their style? But if they don't offer teacher trainings themselves, ask them where they did their training or if they have a recommendation. Using Google and choosing the training that fits into your current schedule is probably not the best idea. It's what I did. If I had my time again, I wouldn't do that. I'm currently doing a 300 hour training with Jason Crandall and I'll chat about that in another video. Number three, the postures they teach you. I went into my 200 hour training expecting to learn so many new postures. Obviously your current pool of knowledge will affect how true this is for you, but a 200 hour is a foundational training to teach you to teach, not a course to teach you all the yoga postures in the world. What's most likely to happen is that you'll gain a better understanding of the alignment of postures that you're already familiar with. Your warrior twos, your eagles, your crescent lunges, down dogs, up dogs. You'll likely learn their names in both English and Sanskrit and be prepared for that you'll likely butcher the Sanskrit on your first attempt. Erdhva Mukha Sanasana. To manage my expectations, I wish I'd known that this wasn't the place where I was going to learn exciting new poses. In hindsight, thank God, because even trying to learn to teach a down dog was enough for me as a new teacher, let alone trying to teach someone, I don't know, a scorpion pincher. So FYI, if you're looking to learn to press to handstand or find really advancements in your practice, taking a 200 hour training isn't it? To the best of my memory, my 200 hour covered crow pose and supported headstand, if that gives you a little bit of context. Number four, anatomy study and failing. So excellent news, you can't really fail a yoga teacher training. It's a course that you've likely spent a lot of money taking and therefore whether there is a test or not, because some do, some don't, there's systems in place that if you don't quite meet the mark the first time round with whatever it is, you can try again, which can be a huge weight off your shoulders. If you're worried about the financial commitment of doing a teacher training and then having nothing to show for it if you fail, let that be a little bit of peace for you. It may not feel basic at all if it's the first time that you've studied human anatomy, 
but you'll learn the names of the bones, you'll learn the names of the major muscles, you'll learn about the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, which are all just fancy names for how blood moves around the body or how we circulate oxygen as we breathe. Some courses will have written test papers uh, and others won't, but either way, don't let them scare you. It's just a part of the learning process. Number five, philosophy and brain mush. A lot of people discover yoga maybe at their local gym and then maybe they go to practice lots at home by themselves or via a YouTube class and you can get quite far in your yoga practice without crossing too many paths with yogic philosophy. This was definitely me when I took my first yoga teach training and I wish I'd known more about philosophy before I started just so that everything wasn't so new and therefore a little overwhelming. You can expect to learn about the history of yoga, where it originated, how it became what it is today and a little about the pioneers of yoga and yogic text. You'll learn about the eight limbed path which is essentially all of the yoga off the mat bits. Guidelines on how to live a good and meaningful life. This includes the yamas and the niyamas which are kind of like moral compasses and a good yoga teacher training will help you look at these from a modern day perspective others may not. Pranayama is also one of those eight limbs which are breathing exercises. There's various different techniques with various different intentions and purposes and most 200 hours will give you an insight into some of the more simple ones. Being prepared for a depth of information that you're likely very unfamiliar with is helpful for setting realistic expectations so be prepared to listen, to learn and for your brain to feel a little bit mushy afterwards it takes time to absorb you'll get there. Number six Teaching is harder than you expect it to be. So teaching practice. It wasn't something that I really gave much thought to before I started. My head was consumed by postures, alignment, sequencing them together, creating a great class. Teaching practice is likely the thing that will humble you the most and give you a newfound awe for your yoga teacher. I remember standing at the front of my um, group training and trying to teach my first sun salutation B and seriously, I couldn't breathe. How on earth could could you remember the cues, remember the sequence, and also teach those cues and sequence whilst also physically demonstrating that? But just a little word of encouragement, like with most things, you get better with practice. So a 200 hour training should include plenty of time to simply practice getting your words out coherently and giving you suggestions and ideas of how to get your instructions across well. This is sometimes with just a one-to-one -one partner, maybe a small group, sometimes to the whole class. Learning about sequencing in a 200 hour tends to be about exploration of postural alignment and then considering what other postures that would link well with to make it a nice continuous flow. I think it's worth noting that there's far more to sequencing, to a effective sequencing than just choreography but it's so much to learn as a new teacher that that kind of depth of education is likely going to feel enough. And then number seven, it's only the beginning. When you get towards the end of your teacher training and the business of yoga talks start coming along, you might be fooled into thinking that you're coming towards the end. No, this is the beginning. I had this idea that when I finished my training I would be this perfectly polished yoga teacher ready and raring to take my mat, get out there and teach. And it was only after I finished that I sat down and realized that I felt like I knew nothing. How do I find students to come to my class? Where should I teach? How do I navigate being self-employed? Self-assessment, what? <laughs> a 200 hour training will have lectures on marketing yourself, about having a website, pricing your services, how to help people discover you as a teacher. And I would hope that in modern courses there'd also be education on using social media and teaching online. My first training course was five years ago where it wasn't really such a big thing and therefore wasn't covered in mine. But overall in my experience the business of yoga isn't given enough focus in a 200 hour because it's likely the topic that everybody has zero knowledge of in comparison to everything else. But don't let this intimidate you, just allow yourself to be prepared to need to keep learning once that you've qualified. Everyone is in the same boat with that daunting feeling of being a newly qualified teacher and what do I knew now? And remembering to take your time and to embrace the undulations of the journey is a valuable mindset to have ahead of time. More videos on teaching yoga coming soon and consider checking out my yoga anatomy workshops to get a little head start on learning about the muscles, the bones and the movements associated with your yoga practice.